All right, uh, long-awaited update on the O3 F350. Good news is, uh, root cause of failure was tracked down. Bad news, customer declined the repairs. They're gonna get rid of that truck and get another vehicle to use for their plowing. So for those who did not see that video yet, go back, look at those ones. Uh, basically, the truck would have all sorts of wonky gauges, would stall intermittently and just wasn't running right so uh the people who watched the first two videos i kind of got tripped up on the one code which i should have known better but it was throwing a code for a transmission output speed sensor so i focused on that and could not duplicate the problem the first time around second time around i i forget what i did with the shop owner but I, 20 25 miles worth of driving we could finally replicate a fault in the vehicle output speed sensor or transmission output speed sensor uh, during a heavy or an uphill hard left hand turn. That was the only way we could duplicate it. So our wheel speed sensor or output speed sensor was just like this, nice normal speed. Start to get a little bit of a wave to it, and that was the most we could get until we finally were able to duplicate like that. And then, right there, that's the worst of it. And like I said, I'm tripped up, and I had even read Theory of Operation on this, read Theory of Operation, and still didn't put the pieces together. One, this vehicle sits all the time and has a dead battery 99% of the time. Two, uh, when reading over how the speedometer system works on the Ford, the output speed sensor is one part of a few different sensors that all work together to operate the gauges and everything else. So to have the actual fault the customer was complaining about of wonky gauges installing out, you would have to have multiple speed sensors and inputs failing. So, could they all fail at the same time? Yes. Did they? In this case, no. What you'll notice here, and which I overlooked, because I wasn't thinking and I overlooked a rather basic test, is this is basically starting to look like a diode signal, or failing diodes, basically too much diode ripple in the alternator. Putting the vehicle under a heavy load, one direction or the other, was causing it to basically go through and garbage in, garbage out. So you get a real noisy, spiked out waveform going into the PCM power feed and the rest of the sensors. You're going to get some weird stuff happening. So what we did was we ended up confirming by uh, customer still had the plow on it. So we went and I started plowing wood chips with it because it's not winter time here it was not winter time when I was looking at it and just tried to simulate the heavy electrical load plowing has on a vehicle for those of you who don't plow have never plowed are blessed to live in an area that never has snow you take your truck take your Jeep SUV whatever put a big old heavy piece of steel on the front of it and drive around at slow speeds with headlights on flashy beacon lights, all that good stuff, and you're constantly putting a high amperage drain on your charging system. So, long story short, we're able to replicate the fault, we're able to get it hot enough and the battery discharged enough from rapid actuation of the plow, like you were plowing a parking lot, to be able to get the diode ripple really spiking out, gauges started going wonky, stopped shifting properly, just garbage. So that's all it was. It was a matter of, even by reading through theory of operation, even by having seen diode ripple failures before, not taking the time to put together all the codes, or lack thereof, put together all the symptoms, and come up with a logical solution for it. Made the mistake a lot of us make where we see a trouble code, we don't determine if it's a cause or a symptom, and spend entirely too much time trying to track that down and also not enough time thinking of how do I best simulate the usage under which the customer has the fault. So 
Um, I'm super slammed right now. It's springtime equipment. Springtime. It's it's nonstop. Uh, customer did not decide to go with the repairs, and the shop owner's got all his own stuff going. So I do not have follow-up waveforms, anything exciting like that. But. It is what it is. Sometimes we don't always get to repair them and see the afterwards, but we did confidently nail it down. Uh, in this case, a lot of the help was through a network of brilliant techs. Um, if you are, go on Facebook, the Diagnostic Laboratory is our Facebook group. Um, there's a post in there going further into detail of all that, so take a look if you want to see uh, some more of the waveforms, see some of the back and forth. Uh, thank you to everybody who contributed there, and side note, for anybody who is on Diagnostic Network, or anybody who's thought about it, or even if you don't know about it, uh, Diag.net, uh, what I'm going to start doing is some of these videos that I do out on the road that are, you know, three, four, five minutes long, I will be doing additional write-ups that go further into the theory, further into my thought process, and posting them up on Diag.net. So, take some time, shoot over there, give it a trial run, see if you guys like it, and if you're ever curious as to more in-depth processes as to mine, what I'm doing, I'll be on there. I uh, would love to see some more heavy-duty guys on there, but anybody at all. Great networking, great information, great articles you can't find anywhere else, so... Give it a shot and hope to see you there. Hope to see you on the Facebook group if you're interested. And uh, we've got some more cool stuff coming along in the future here. So I am done for now. Have a good one and see you guys soon.